Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Barroso fails to control errors in use of EU funds. Britain's MPs suffer a communication deficit on EU affairs. European Union Commission seeks to crack down on costly energy subsidies and why the EU is desperate for Britain to stay. Plus, tobacco and related products, manufacture, presentation and sale, approximation of member states' legislation. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, some breaking news. Ladies and gentlemen, the UK government has been subverted, and it is lying to us all. This is not limited to the darker halls of power. It goes all the way to the top, to the very Prime Minister, David Cameron. Exclusively to the unit, we reveal how the process takes place, and we provide the evidence that proves it later in the show. Now, to our first story from our homepage. For the 19th consecutive year, the European Union has no full agreement on the spending of EU funds. MP Dennis de Jong said, Not only has there been no approval given by the court, the error rates have now run for four years in a row. The Commission, led by President Barroso, has therefore made no impact in this area. The situation has worsened. The Commission is now proposing that the solution is the creation of a European public prosecutor that would detect and prosecute fraud in member states. National parliaments which have this proposal via the yellow card procedure are already scuppered because it is not an effective tool to combat fraud. My friends, even Conservative estimates account our membership subscription to the EU at £50 million a day. For the better part of the last 20 years, no one in the European Union Auditor's Office will sign off the accounts as true. Can you imagine trying to present such a shamble of records to the UK Tax Office or Company's House? Your business would be investigated forthwith. The UK suffers from a communications deficit regarding its in-out referendum pledge, with parliamentarians failing to inform their electorate, who lack very basic knowledge of EU affairs, writes Rezul Umit. When James Wharton, the backbench Conservative MP for Stockton South, proposed a legislation leading to a referendum on the membership of the United Kingdom to the European Union, against the wishes of the Prime Minister, he must have envisaged some problems on the way with this move. However, the question proposed for the referendum shows that he did not expect the latest problem arising due to the communication deficit in EU affairs. The UK, as a member state, reconsiders its membership status to the EU. Prime Minister David Cameron promises an in-out referendum by the end of 2017, subject to political conditions. However, backbenchers who do not want to wait that long reject the conditionality of the promise and have gone ahead with a private member's bill and started the legislative process for a European Union referendum bill in 2013-2014. Now, as part of this process, the Electoral Commission has recently completed its work on the proposed referendum question. Do you think that the United Kingdom should be a member of the European Union? Well, having interviewed numerous members of British society to find out whether the question is clear and impartial, the Commission has observed that not everyone is aware of the fact that the UK is already a member of the EU. More on the sleeping sheeple of Britain later in the show. EU energy prices will rise unless European governments stick to strict guidelines on when subsidies are justified, the European Commission said on Tuesday. Following intense political debate and a storm of protest over energy prices, the Commission, the EU's executive arm, is revising rules to guide the European Union's 28 member states. Generous support schemes for solar energy, for instance, have been blamed for adding to the financial burdens of households and businesses at a time when economic recovery is tentative. The Commission says the subsidies should be phased out and meanwhile more flexible instead of feed-in tariffs, which are fixed-rate incentives, it favours a feed-in premium, which would rise or fall depending on market conditions. 
The ultimate aim of the market is to deliver secure and affordable energy for our citizens and businesses. Now, whichever way the legislation swings, we feel confident that the price of energy in the UK will simply just get higher. Next year, we'll usher in a new era in British politics, though the politicians seem slow to recognise it. In January, we shall see the Romanian-Bulgarian influx, which is guaranteed by our EU membership. Migration Watch UK estimates that 50,000 may be expected next year and in subsequent years, so long as the Romanian-Bulgarian minimum wage is about one-sixth of our own, they will continue to come. And public anger will continue to rise at the painful evidence that we cannot control our own borders. Then will come the May elections for the European Parliament, in which UKIP is bound to do well, perhaps very well indeed. Westminster politicians are coming to fear the worst. Opinion polls regularly show UKIP ahead of the Lib Dems, who look an increasingly lost cause. All three main parties may soon be contemplating various local deals with UKIP, which, so far, UKIP have ruled as out of the question. Ladies and gentlemen, the UK government has been subverted and it is lying to us all. This is not limited to the darker halls of power, it goes all the way to the top, to the very Prime Minister David Cameron. Let me reveal just who is calling the shots when it comes to control and governance. In June this year, our research team revealed an amendment to EU legislation with regard to plain packaging on tobacco products, including cigarettes. Through corporate lobbying, the EU directive to enforce plain packaging on all cigarettes across the EU was dropped from the EU directive. Now, news articles reported in July said, UK Prime Minister David Cameron has decided to shelve the introduction of plain packaging of cigarettes. UK government ministers and Chairman Cameron had been dutifully following the EU directive. Now, with that EU announcement, the UK coalition government changed its position and went to press with a statement saying it would no longer be going ahead with the plain packaging proposals. Well, this morning I heard on the news that our slippery diplomat, King David of Campbellwick, has had his strings pulled once more. Here is the article released this morning by Sky News. David Cameron is set to be accused of a major U-turn over the introduction of plain packaging of cigarettes. Now, the government is poised to announce it is now pressing ahead with the measure aimed at making smoking less attractive to youngsters. Well, our research team reported on the 7th of November in our legislation section that the European Union had changed the directive once again, as the European courts had upheld the directive despite challenges from the global tobacco industry. So now we're all expected to believe, after last night's interview with the BBC, that David Cameron can and will renegotiate Britain's relationship with the EU, and that, provided we vote him into power at the next election, he will give us a referendum. <laughs> How can we possibly believe him? Mr Cameron has shown that he cannot even control legislation and governance over cigarette packaging. To think that something so small can be dictated at EU level and nation-state ministers waft to the EU's tune like damp reeds in the breeze. Folks, we are at a crisis. Through deception, treachery and greed, our political class have subverted the governance of Britain, all but wiped out our sovereignty and kept all but a few of us asleep at the wheel whilst they do it. Now let, remi let me remind you of the briefing given to UK government ministers back in 1973 by the UK Foreign and Commonwealth Office. In document 1048 it reads, After entry there would be a major responsibility on Her Majesty's government and on all political parties not to exacerbate public concern by attributing unpopular measures or unfavourable economic developments to the remote and unmanageable workings of the community. The community in that statement is the European Economic Community, what we now call the European Union, and what it is stating quite clearly is that British politicians and government should lie to the people of Britain in order to maintain the assimilation of Britain into Europe. <laughs> so much for our freedom and democracy. 
What a high price our forefathers paid in two world wars to protect our freedoms and rights to self-governance. What a terrible tragedy that those we have elected to represent us have given away our country for a handful of magic beans. Today in our video library, how far is the extent of this subversion of our political system? Well, as we have shown in our documentary film Betrayed, the process is all but complete. Here today I beg your indulgence, if you haven't seen Betrayed yet, then go into the film section of our video library, which is on our website, where you can find it and watch it now. You will see that since 1973, successive ministers have handed over more and more power to the unelected commission in the European Union. The Lisbon Treaty being the final nail in the coffin. As I just demonstrated in the previous story, you can vote for whomever you like. It will make not one jot of difference. Until Britain leaves the European Union completely, we will never be free of its deceptive tyranny. There is a reason Iceland overthrew their government and now simply refuses to even sit at the negotiating table with the EU. That is because through desperate economic collapse and social pain, they have learnt the difficult lessons taught by breaching constitution and losing self-determination. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>